Hi guys, this is Caleb Ladd, and I'm going to be talking about William Shakespeare versus Christopher Marlowe. So, as we all know, Shakespeare is one of, if not the most famous writers, authors of all time. He is still being talked about today, even 404 years after his death. We still have a dedicated class to him. So something's got to set him apart, right? Why is he still being talked about way more than other people? Why don't other authors of this period have classes dedicated to them? So let's take a look at Shakespeare and what he wrote. So Shakespeare wrote stories in multiple different genres. There's more than what I listed here, but these are just five that I came up with. Uh, so he wrote romances such as The Tempest, comedies such as A Midsummer Night's Dream, tragedies like Romeo and Juliet, morality plays like King Lear, and historical plays such as Henry IV Part II. But most of his plays were broken into three major categories. Tragedies, which have themes of seriousness. Uh, death is important. It contains a tragic hero with a fatal flaw, often a nobleman or a higher up. Uh, history plays, which includes propaganda for Shakespearean current events real figures from England's history and embellishments of plot and characters from these historical events. And last but not least, comedies, which he wrote more of than any other genre. So comedies obviously include comedic language, maybe plot twists, mistaken identities, maybe weddings and love obstacles. Now let's talk about Christopher Marlowe. So it was thought for a long time that Marlowe could have been the real William Shakespeare. The theory that Shakespeare wasn't really Shakespeare, that it was just a pen name, kind of drew people to make this a theory. And many saw Marlowe as a rival of Shakespeare, which comes naturally. They were born two months apart in the same place and were both very popular playwrights. So naturally they're going to be compared to each other. They're going to be pitted against each other. So although the theory that Marlowe was the real Shakespeare has largely been dropped, in 2016, a team of 23 academic, academics came to the conclusion that Marlowe actually co-wrote King Henry VI parts 1, 2, and 3 with Shakespeare. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So we talked about what Shakespeare wrote, the genres he wrote in. Um, let's talk about Marlowe. Marlowe wrote a lot of dramas and tragedies. His dramas included the likes of Tamberlin the Great and Dido, Queen of Carthage. And his tragedies included Dr. Faustus, which is his most memorable work, many think, and Edward II. So let's talk about some similarities. Both Marlowe and Shakespeare wrote in blank verse a lot. So we'll talk about this a little later, but one of them kind of started blank verse and one of them kind of perfected it. They both used tragic heroes. So these are heroes, mostly people of higher social class that they have this tragic flaw about them that kind of brings about their downfall. Genres, they both wrote tragedies, they both wrote dramas, 
They both wrote some historical pieces. They both tried their hand at comedy. Uh, a lot of their plays commonly started with a dispute amongst main characters. They both had themes of freedom to express individual views and ideas. So their mindsets on these issues brought up in their plays were not closed. They shared multiple perspectives and multiple ways of looking at these issues. Comedy. They both tried their hand at comedy, and as I'll talk about later, one of them was much more successful than the other in the comedic field. Uh, human feelings over moral values. So they kind of wanted to, wanted the audiences to free themselves from the thought of moral judgment and wanted them to prioritize the actions and emotions of the characters, which gave more importance to human feelings and senses rather than what we think is objectively right and wrong. And characters. So they have very similar characters in most of their works, like Prospero from Shakespeare's The Tempest and Dr. Marlowe's Marlowe's Dr. Faustus are very similar characters. And Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet and Anthony and Cleopatra are a lot like Aeneas and Dido from the Queen of Carthage in Marlowe's work. So now let's look at how this team of 23 academics just like how they decided that Marlowe actually had a hand in writing the first three parts of King Henry VI. They must have found some differences in their writing style. So they went in and analyzed the frequency of words being used in plays at that time. They found what words were commonly used by most all playwrights, what words were not used as much, and stuff like that. And they found Shakespeare plus and Shakespeare minus words. So Shakespeare plus words being words or combinations of words that Shakespeare used more than the average author at that time, the average playwright. And Shakespeare minus words being words or combinations of words that Shakespeare didn't really use or didn't use as much. So when they went and looked at King Henry VI, they found that there were parts of it where combinations of words were being used that weren't common for Shakespeare. And that's where their suspicion that Marlowe actually helped with this came in. So a lot of these words or groups of words I found were kind of more dark toned. So some examples are glory droopeth, call out, regions under earth, forsake me, curse, ugly, change my shape, and fell and enchantress. So, talk about similarities, let's talk about differences. So, I said comedy was a similarity, it is also one of their biggest differences. Uh, as I said, one of them was much more effective than the other. Shakespeare was a great comic. He introduced great comic relief in a lot of his plays. He was a genuinely funny guy, while... Marlowe was not really blessed with the art of comedy. He was not a naturally funny guy. Uh, some of his jokes were either immature or poorly timed. Uh, education. It was largely thought that Shakespeare's 
uh, lower level of education came through in his writing, his limited view of what other countries or other settings looked like or stuff like that, which is true. He was largely homeschooled, self-taught, while Marlowe had multiple scholarships by the age of 14. And two years later, at the age of 16, he was attending Corpus Christi College, getting his degree. So he was very well educated. Blink first, which was also a similarity, is also a difference. They both wrote Blink first, but Marlowe kind of revolutionized it. He kind of brought it into the fray while Shakespeare kind of took that blink first that Marlowe created and took off with it. He made it his own, made it a lot better, and really just upped his game for Marlowe's. Marlowe had largely predictable endings. There's another point a few down that will talk about this a little more, but it was very easy to predict Marlowe's endings while Shakespeare was not that way. Uh, mystical elements. Shakespeare used mystery and the supernatural, like fairies and magic and wizards in his pieces, while Marlowe didn't really do that as much. Um, Marlowe's stories that he told were largely personal. They, well, while, while they weren't, uh, well, obviously they weren't all something that happened to him. They could represent something that he had gone through or something, a thought that he had. And that goes for the characters too. He created characters that largely represented him or fractured parts of him. While Shakespeare had a more worldly view, he tried to encompass everyone and his characters and his plots. Um, Marlowe had largely lacking women. He didn't really include a lot of women in his pieces. And when he did, they were not well realized. They showed a general, like, not good understanding of how women are, how they live, who they are. And this could lead to the um, theory that Marlowe was actually homosexual, which was widely thought. And Shakespeare had great women in his writing. Uh, that brings me to another point that I did not include in this, but I wanted to bring up. Shakespeare used characters as foils, which is basically a contrast to the tragic heroes that I brought up. It's a character that's contrasting from that hero to kind of highlight the flaws of that character. And Marlowe didn't really do that. Shakespeare had great side characters. He had very memorable side characters. Um, while Marlowe focused more on his main characters, he wanted to flesh out the main characters, and his side characters were kind of lacking. And as I kind of brought up earlier, Marlowe had largely linear plots. He had very predictable endings because his plots were a straight line. Step one, step two, step three, ending. Something like that. Like it was very easy to follow while Shakespeare had a bunch of subplots within the plot that helped to make it more interesting, but he also tied it all together in the end. 
So now let's look at some comedy. Um, this is an example from Act 4, Scene 2 of Dr. Faustus from Marlowe. Um, it reads, Oh, say not so, sir. The doctor has no skill, no art, no cunning to present these lords or bring before this royal emperor, the mighty monarch, warlike Alexander. If Faustus do it, you are straight resolved and bold Acteon's sheep to turn the stag. So, here, Faustus is getting angry with Benvolio because he's mocking Faustus's magical abilities, which is something that Faustus is, he's like, he's very proud of his magical abilities, and he could not let this teasing go unchecked. So, he went and put antlers on him and turned his shape turn his shape to turn a stag so he just decided to turn this guy into a deer when dr faustus is basically preparing to die at this point he's sold his soul to the devil essentially and won't repent he is prepared to die everyone's preparing for his death and he's out here turning people into deer it's just not it's immature putting antlers on someone and it's not well timed it kind of ruined the tragic feeling of it shakespeare on the other hand was the king of insults so i put some examples here uh from a midsummer a midsummer night's dream i am sick when i do look on thee he's basically saying when i look at you it makes me sick that's pretty much what he's saying <laughs> from henry the fourth part one there's no more faith in thee than in a stewed prune. Basically, he's calling these people out for being posers. They be faithful. They claim to be faithful, but it's not true. He calls them out on a lie and says, "You guys are no more faithful than a stewed prune." And lastly, from As You Like It, quote, I do desire that we may be better strangers. It's basically saying, I don't like you at all. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to know you. I don't want to be your friend. Let's just be strangers. So this is just golden comedy, golden insults. Shakespeare was great at it. He was blessed with comedy. So to wrap it up, uh, Shakespeare was influenced by Marlowe and this shows in his writing. They were similar in many aspects, but also different in many aspects. They're similar enough where they got away with co-writing the first three parts of King Henry VI without anyone knowing for 425 years, roughly 425 years. It took 425 years for people to figure out that this play was co-written. So they were fairly similar in their writing style. However, when you look at their work separately, there are both similarities and differences, as we talked about. And while Shakespeare took inspiration from Marlowe, this seems to be a case of the student becoming the master. So that's my presentation, Shakespeare versus Marlowe. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.